on a framework for assessment of lending. A framework for assessment of lending. This will be the focus of our attention this evening. <coughs> now, lending is a certain requirement of any bank, and therefore it remains a basic function of a bank. Remember, uh, since day one, since day one, we started by defining a bank. Okay, we define a bank as a financial institution that mobilize deposit. So what we see here is that bank mobilize deposits. All right. Now, bank is a financial institution that mobilize deposit and using the deposit for the following issues. Number one, for investment in marketable securities. And number two, for issuance of different credit facilities. Okay. Issuing of different credit facilities. There you'll find loans, overdrafts, etc., etc. Okay. Now, you see from the definition, actually this definition uh, comes from the Bank of Tanzania Act as well as Banking and Financial Institution Act of 2004 and 2015, uh, 14, sorry. Now, that is to say, lending is a statutory function of a bank. If a bank has been authorized to mobilize the deposits, then it has to offer also uh, some loans. But again, it's also because almost 75% of the bank profit, okay, comes from the lending business. So lending is of paramount importance to the bank, okay? Now, uh, basically, banks perform intermediation function. That is, it mobilizes funds from the surplus spending unit and channel to the deficit spending unit. Therefore, by doing lending, it means the bank is performing uh, effective allocation of resources, one of the important tasks that is to be done by the banks. Okay. Now, if these funds comes from the surplus spending unit, then bank needs to ensure that again this fund can be repaid back to their rightful owners all right now bank lending can be conducted well or poor depending with the methodology adopted now it's not our interest to have poor lending however i'm not saying it's not there it is there sometimes we do some mistakes okay that can lead to some disastrous results all right but it's not our intention as a matter of fact that rationale of this program is to ensure that by the time you complete the entire program, you are in the position to avoid poor lending. Rather, you will be practicing a very well lending practices. All right? Now, again, our institutions like banks have put forward some methodologies that you as a banker needs to adhere to in order to successfully perform this function of lending all right therefore that is the reason there is a clear defined credit policy or sometimes we call it lending guideline okay the credit policy is also called lending manual or lending guidelines okay that is to say if you are a banker working for the credit department you don't do things as you wish or as you please rather you have to adhere to the set forth guidelines okay and if you forget anything then you need to consult this uh, very important document the lending manual or the credit policy of an bank okay again <coughs> this manual actually has been developed following some important principles or fundamental principles of good lendings and by following these fundamental principles of good lending is then and only then you'll be in a position to make some sound decisions on regarding to whether you should offer or decline the credit proposition okay again as a bank officer you are hereby advised to be transparent and to adhere to the guidelines okay so if there is a specific approach that you have to follow, then you are required to adhere to this particular approach in order to ensure that your practice 
is safe and sound all the time. That is to say, you, you do not want to put your bank into a jeopardy, okay, with particularly with the regulators or other uh, stakeholders of the bank, right? Now, we all know that anyone can learn. As a matter of fact, even in our place of work, okay, at place of work, sometimes we lend money to one another, all right? But there are some issues associated with lending money to one another. And that's the reason now, uh, in a bank, the practice is slightly different, okay? Why? Because... In a bank, we need to distinguish between a good banker and a bad banker. And a good banker is the one who will ensure that the loan out money, okay, is repaid in time. Why? Because, remember, we are using the deposits to offer credits, all right? Uh, in balance sheet, okay, in balance sheet, if you examine the balance sheet, and important ratios and important ratios you will see there is this one important ratio that is total loans total loans to deposit okay last time i checked there was one bank which had uh, 75 percent okay this ratio is 75 percent meaning that this bank has committed 75 percent of total deposit into loans meaning that if it happens 30% or 50% of the depositors comes to the bank at once requesting to make a withdrawal, this bank will be in a very serious problem. But anyway, in the banking business, there are some other means that we do in order to avoid this kind of liquidity crisis. Okay? Again, uh, you guys need to know that we are lending money. We are not giving away like you're lending money in order to do what in order to gain profit it's not a charity business we're lending money in order to make some more profit okay therefore you as a banker you need to act professionally and resist outside the pressures you know in a bank we have these types of customers actually we have retail customers and we have corporate customer. In most cases, bankers pay attention to these corporate customers. Okay. And these corporate customers, since they are wealthy people, highly connected, sometimes they may want you to appraise their proposition as fast as you can. While actually here, I advise you to take your time. Now, if you try to make him understand, like, okay, sir, I need to take my time to do this, they might supersede you and talk to your superiors. So, in no time, you'll be facing pressure from above. We call this pressure from above, right? Now, pressure from above can lead you to do some mistakes. And remember, at the end of the day, should anything happen, these individuals who are pressurizing you to act, out of procedures will never be there for you because in most cases they will simply make some phone calls to you so everything will be available you won't have like a written document that you can produce in case of any dispute therefore ensure that you resist outside temperature and again you collect a lot of information for you to make uh, a sound decision whenever you are evaluating the lending preposition okay again don't be too proud to ask for a second opinion okay just in case you think that there are some issues that uh, are kind of confusing to you remember banks are risk averse i think uh when it comes to when it's come to risk and return all right you know we have individuals who are risk averse and again we have individuals who are risk lovers right and some are risk neutral so bankers are risk averse 
meaning that bankers are extremely cautious okay before they could make into any kind of investment therefore if a customer wants to secure a loan he needs to prove to you that indeed the bank funds will be safe all the time actually for an experienced banker an experienced banker can make the lending decision basing on his intuition we call it that feelings all right but actually this one comes from a number of years okay of experience that he has acquired in that particular business okay if you have just joined joined the department today i don't think you'll be able to do this based on your only intuition or your feelings all right now for that reason we have principles or the canals that can assist a newcomer at your department to make sound decision and on time okay again i should tell you even though i'm saying that we have these principles sometimes we call them canons of lending but these are not the laws of physical science like my, the point here is not all the time you have to go by the book sometimes we go out of the box in order to ensure that the mission is succeed but don't deviate too much all right therefore lending is an art lending is not like a science that requires you to follow all the time the set forth rules right now <coughs> In lending, there are some basic considerations that can assist even a new bank officer to make these kind of decisions. These are developed from what we call principles or canons of good lending. Okay, That is to say now, for any banker, whenever you are pricing a credit position, you have to ensure that you are there to these principles or to these canons of lending. Why? I mentioned earlier and I'm going to mention again. A bank, a bank mobilizes deposit. From what? From the public. That means a bank borrows funds from the public. That is to say, the bank owes the public. For that reason, deposit appears under the liability side of the balance sheet right now the borrowed fund is supposed to be repaid back and sometimes with a certain interest depend with the agreement for example if it is time deposit it means it will mature after a certain time t with a certain interest and if it's saving likewise at one point in time a bank is supposed to pay some interest to the deposits therefore it is the deposit that we've mobilized. You are going to issue out for loans. It is the deposit that we have just borrowed that are going to issue to the uh, to the customers for loans. Okay. Therefore, you have to ensure the loans are going to perform. You don't want to have the non-performing loans because the non-performing loans can make the bank to fail to meet the depositor's request for withdrawal and that will be a crisis okay so every time remember that you are using depositors fund to issue loans and at any time a depositor can come and demand to make a withdrawal so a banker needs to hammer customers request remember this principle is depositors fund is subject to demand with the draw now for you not to forget a thing particularly when you are appraising a credit proposition or you are on face-to-face -face interview with a customer i suggest you use the mnemonics okay it will be easy for you to remember uh, what to ask what to do and the procedures to follow. The mornings can be your best savior. Look at uh, look at this 
cartoon here. You have two individuals in a bank settings. Actually, this individual here to me looks like a credit officer. And here, number two, this is a customer. Look at the questions. Bank officer is asking the customer, how much do you need? And the customer goes like, how much have you got? Okay. This is not the proper way of originating or apprising a credit proposition. This is wrong. Okay. This is not a better practice to follow. Okay. Now, before you grant any credit facility, you as a banker, you need to ensure that the following conditions are satisfied. And these conditions are basically the principles or canon of lending. Number one, safety of the funds. Number two, liquidity of the bank. And three, profitability of the transaction. Okay, and the transaction in question here is what? Is the loan, okay, or the credit facility in question. All the every time, whenever you are facing with this situation that you are supposed now to apprise or someone is asking for a loan, you need to ask yourself these three questions to ensure that the repositions actually false or the, the, the three questions are thoroughly answered before you can even move further all right so these are what we call the basic principles or the canons of lending someone ask you what are the canons of lending safety liquidity and profitability of the transaction now let's turn our attention to these principles or to these canons canon number one safety okay now when you are loaning out the funds, you must ensure that it is safe and funds will always be safe for as long as it's out there. Look guys, I mentioned that banks mobilize deposit, okay? So at all time, when the deposit is in the banking vault, it is 100% safe. But once funds okay once the loan has been disbursed okay when the loan has been disbursed it means the funds are no longer in a banking rather the funds are with what with the customer in the customer possession okay so this principle requires you to ensure that for the entire time bank funds is with the customer will continue to be as safe as possible, okay? If you feel that this fund won't be safe, decline the proposition. And that's the reason, that's the reason sometimes we are asking for a security, okay? To save us the, for, as the collateral for the loan. This is plan B, that is to say, in case the borrower to repay back the loan, we can realize our funds following what? Following selling of the credit security. But this one again can damage the reputation of the bank and also it is costful. And the outcome is uncertain. That's the reason we do not want to rely to realize, uh, to realize the bank fund from selling of the security. It would be much better if we can have what? Timely repayment. Okay, so please ensure that bank funds is safe out there. And the second principle is liquidity. Liquidity of the bank is of paramount importance. Why? Remember, a bank uses customs customers deposit okay and deposits can be from corporate customer or from retail customer but 
no matter where the deposit comes from, there's this golden rule that is customers deposit is subject to demand withdrawal. At any given moment, if the customer requires to make a withdrawal, provided that the withdrawal was made during working hours in a proper manner as instructed by the bank, then the banker needs to honor customer's request of withdrawal. Therefore, if it is the bank deposits or customer deposits that we have issued out as loan, you need to ensure that this loan is timely repaid. Why? Because if it is a sluggish repayment, then the bank can enter into a liquidity crisis. I should just mention to you that there are some several risks that a banking business or a bank can face, and one of those risks is liquidity risk. Okay. Now, if a bank has liquidity risk, this risk can trigger some other risks such as operational risk. Okay. So, two or more risks facing the bank at a time might lead to collapsing of the bank. Therefore, it is within your interest to protect the bank position all the time. Therefore, ensure that ensure that repayment is not sluggish. Repayment is timely in order to prevent the bank from getting into liquidity crisis. Profitability. As I mentioned earlier, lending business is not charity work. As a matter of fact, okay, as a matter of fact, a bank incurs a lot of cost in order to run the business. All right. Think of this. What are some of the expenses that the bank uh, enters or incurs during the conduct of the bank of, or bank operation? Bank pays salaries. Okay. Bank pays utility bills. Bank pays rent. Okay. Bank purchases stationaries. Bank purchases technology. And a lot of issues, furnitures, etc., etc. You can see, like the banking halls are very well furnished. They look very nice. Yeah? You have the air condition, AC units, television sets, right, etc., etc. All those items requires what? Requires fund. Therefore, this fund needs to come from profit you guys need to make a business in such a way that it will generate as much profit for a bank to be able to meet this cost of operations therefore <clears throat> for you to make a profit when you are loaning out the money you need to charge what you need to charge a certain interest now, of course, there is a guideline uh, for every bank on uh, how to charge this interest. But interest could be the same for customers and might not be the same. Okay, why? Because there are some conditions that uh, can contribute for uh, difference in interest to be charged for the loan. Okay. Now, <laughs> that is to say, the charge interest rate will depend on the following issues. Number one, borrower's credit worthiness. Okay. How much risk are we facing if we are to issue this loan? Okay. Therefore, you can decide on whether you should charge a high interest or less interest. For example, look at the microfinance operations. Okay. Microfinance, particularly uh, when using solidarity group lending. Solidarity group lending. And a solidarity group lending there is no collateral. It's all about peer rating or peer pressure. That is the only collateral being used over there. For that reason, the loan, the loan fund is in a tremendous risk. So how do we do in microfinance? We charge very high interest rate. The interest rate that is charged by microfinance is greater than the interest rate that is charged by only a normal commercial bank. 
nature of security that has been pledged. Remember, uh, in the issue of safety, in the issue of safety, I mentioned that, I mentioned that uh, sometimes you might ask the borrower to bring a certain security that is, this is an asset that will save as collateral for this loan. Okay. Now, depending on the nature of security, it can give you a, 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 a highlight on what interest rate you should charge for this particular loan. Mode of charge of security. Okay. Mode of charge of security. All right. Uh, some of the security can be charged to the bank as mortgage. All right. Some can be just a mere pledge. There are some modes of charging this security. And again, even if it's a mortgage, okay, or the venture or a pledge, again, a mortgage is uh, there are two types of mortgage, okay, there is a legal mortgage and the other, okay. So, which one is the best? Which one best secure uh, the bank funds? That one can give you a hint on how much uh, interest you should charge to this particular loan, all right. And last, if the type of credit facility that the applicant has just asked, all right. Uh, there are some of the credit facility should be cheap and some actually are expensive because here we need to ascertain risk. Remember, for example, if it's just a loan, business loan, which will last for three years, repayable only monthly, here, the interest rate will be greater than the interest rate that you will charge for simply a bill or invoice discounting. Because we see invoice discounting or bill discounting, uh, in most cases, the time frame is too short. Okay. Therefore, uh, interest will be different as well. Now we come to what we call lending assessment models. I'm sure you guys probably at one moment in time you have come across loan for loan application form. Loan application form. Or if any of you have ever borrowed some funds from my bank then I'm sure they must have filled this loan application form. So maybe you are just filling your information, but you didn't pay much attention. However, it is the intention of this session to highlight you on why there are some specific questions being asked on that particular loan form. And just to let you know, most of the loan forms that are out there used by different banks have been developed following the lending assessment model that has been adopted by your bank. Basically, there are different lending assessment models. Okay? There are almost seven or eight. But all of them can be used to analyze or to make an appraisal of the credit deposition. But no single bank will use, let's say, two or three lending assessment model at a go. Maybe a bank will choose to use one, if more than two models. But either way, it all comes down to the credit policy or the lending guideline that I mentioned earlier. Okay. The lending guideline define the lending assessment model that your bank needs to apply. And again, once you have known the model, for you not to forget, you need to use what? The mnemonics. So, the models in question or the common mnemonics are such as Campari, 
six C's, five P's, and C E freezing, triple C P A A R T S, P E S T, P A R S E R, and L A P P. So these are the commonly used mnemonic used for lending assessment or simply call them the lending assessment models now i'm not gonna explain all these models i'll mostly focus on these two the company and the six c's however uh, six c's mostly identified as five c's okay. so i'll focus on this asa is used mostly in evaluation of uh, credit proposition from corporations or some companies and in case of our country we normally use either the six C's or the company. As for the six C's, the first C stands for character, second C stands for capital, the third C stands for capacity, while the fourth C stands for collateral, the fifth one stands for condition, and the last one stands for confidence. Okay. That's all about the six C's. And what about company? C and a company, and a company, C stands for character, A for ability, M for margin, P for purpose, another A for amount, then R for repayment and last insurance uh, excuse me I which is stand for security okay I stand for security of the loan or say collateral of the loan both considered to be insurance why insurance because it's a backup plan backup plan a fallout, a fallout plan just in case the loan is not fully repaid you can recover your funds or you can erase your funds from selling of the security therefore security provide insurance to the loan or to the disbursed funds therefore we are going to see how to analyze thoroughly this compact this assessment model compact. Now, as I mentioned earlier, first C for character. Here, as a credit officer, you need to fully understand the character of, you need to fully understand the character of either the firm that wants to borrow and the managers running the firm and if it's just uh, an individual or personal loan, then the character of the individual in question okay, this is the character of an individual who applies for this particular law okay then in case of ability you need to see what was the time to determine the ability of those individual who runs that particular business okay are they capable of doing this or what margin margin is all about the profit that the bank will earn okay the profit that the bank will earn following what following this particular preposition and remember profit comes from the charged interest rate but why is this particular individual asking for the loan? So, purpose. We need to be sure of whether the purpose is acceptable by bank policy as well as 
uh, rules of the country. If not, decline the deposition. If for amount, again, amount here need to be in absolute terms, not in relative terms. Like, how much funds do you want for your project? I need USD 10,000. And not, I need USD, uh, okay, if you give me between 10 and 20, not bad. No. You need to be specific. How much do you need? Okay. And also, no comparison. R for the payment. How the payment will be done. When the payment will be done. Okay. And last one, insurance, as I've just mentioned, is all about what? Security for them. Now, let's turn our attention to character. Character simply means the integrity of the business and its managers, or the integrity of an individual, in case of a personal loan, is an integrity of an individual who has just applied for a loan. A honest borrower of good character are more likely to meet their obligations. The opposite will be dishonest borrowers. Dishonest borrowers will tend to cheat or to commit fraud. So as a banker, you're supposed to screen. Actually, when we say appraising, right? Loan appraisal, one of the issue that you as a credit officer will be doing here is a screening. The bank receives a lot of application. Okay. Bank receives a lot of application for a loan. So you need to screen in order to remain with only good preposition. If there is any bad preposition, you need to be able to screen it out in order to decline the preposition. Okay. So you need to deal with characters who are honest because they are more likely to meet their financial obligation to honor the contract. Okay. The character of an individual borrower can be established through the following issues. Number one, a face-to-face -face interview. But number two, past record. You guys, I'm sure you are aware of what we call the CRB, okay, Credit Reference Bureau. If you have an individual goes by the name XYZ coming to your bank, wants to borrow some money, to establish the past record, the past conduct, if this individual has ever taken a loan from somewhere else, you can simply visit the CRB. From CRB, CRB you will get information regarding this particular individual. So if you come across some red flags, information that uh, will make you suspicious, then immediately decline the position. Again, probably under the CRB, the customer has no any bad track history. But during face-to-face, -face, you'll have an opportunity to ask this customer different questions in order to fill the gap. Don't you ever, never fill gaps, okay? Don't you ever, never fill gaps for your customer. If there is anything, let the customer respond. Let the customer be the one to fill those gaps. As for you, and that's the reason, before you invite this customer for a face-to-face -face interview, you need first to ensure that this customer fill in the loan application form. After fill in the loan application form and submit together with supportive evidences or supportive documents such as financial statements, the salary slip, etc. The required documents. Take your time to go through these documents and the proposition. If you have some questions that need clarification, Okay, note them down in your diary. And the, all these questions 
needs to be answered during a face-to-face -face interview. Don't you ever assume anything. Customers are as well smart. And fraudsters are even smarter. Okay. Now, <clears throat> again, under the character, you need to establish the following about the, uh, the particular individual or business. Age and health. Okay. Now, if it's human being, Remember, we talk earlier, we discussed about age, like 18 to 25, flight risky, all right? 26 uh, to 45, this is good age, not bad, okay? Uh, 46 to 55, not that bad, but above 55, let's say 56 and above, uh, there can be some underly underlying health issues. So, uh, treatment or the amount to be disbursed among this group age should be different. An individual is not married, too young, is a flight risky, can default and disappear just like that. But an individual between the age of 35, 40 to 45, okay, these individuals are committed, they are into some sort of uh, family commitment a long time at work, so they do not pose as much risk as the youngsters, okay? But as for older people, you know, there are some other healthy issues. Again, if it is the, if it is the business, okay? If it is the business, then health refers to financial soundness. Help refers to financial soundness. Is the business doing fine? Is it financial well, uh, wealthy? Financial management? Is it good? Okay, individuals who are running the business, do they really know what they are doing, etc. etc. And as for the age of business, okay, from zero to two, this can be considered as new business. Okay, but as if the business has 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, and so forth, okay, it means it has been there for quite some time, so there is a lot of experience, okay, through the entire time it has seen a lot, yeah? it has enjoyed some good and some worse, all right. Uh, personal stability, this mostly applies to individual borrower, okay? Like, you don't want to borrow uh, or give your money, bank's money, to an individual who is alcoholic, for example, okay? You want to give the money to an individual who really knows how to deal with those funds, who is responsible. Responsible person. Integrity and honesty. If an individual has some elements of committing fraud or has been accused of committing fraud, okay, then be aware. If possible, decline the proposition. Otherwise, you need to treat him with ultimately caution. Otherwise, he may fraud you, he may scam you again. Is he honesty? If you're dealing with the company, then here you need to ascertain the character of individuals who are running that particular company. I'm talking about managers. Okay? Are there some issues regarding their character? Okay? Now, if there is, are those issues bad for the business or good for the business? You need to establish this. Personal resources. Okay. Personal resources like assets, etc. Even to a business. Okay. You know, remember, for example, a company. We say a company is 
a separate entity from its owners. It can own assets. So if it's a company, does it have some assets? Okay. Outgoings and connection. Okay, you know, sometimes we might be want to we might be want to recruit a certain corporate customer into our bank. Okay, you know, as a banker also you're responsible to mobilize deposits. So for example, we want Microsoft to open an account with our bank. So for Microsoft to do so, let's assume that we need to win Mr. Bill Gates. Okay. So somehow, somehow, this businessman that goes by the name Freddy comes to your bank asking for a loan. And you know that through Freddy, it can be easy for you to reach out to Mr. Bill Gates. Therefore, again, you have to see this. Okay. But again, uh, caution to you. Even though it's your intention to reach out to Mr. Bill Gates through Freddy in order to get this corporate deposit, if Freddy poses some considerable risk to your business, you better forget this and try another approach. Decline this particular proposition. Now, Let's discuss ability. Whose ability here? Okay. Ability of the customer. And the customer can be an individual. Okay. Ability of the customer. So this customer can be an individual in case of a personal loan or can be a business or company in case of a business loan. All right. Therefore, if it's a business, then we need to establish ability of what? Business managers. Okay. These should be our focus. Therefore, ability simply means legality of the contract between the bank and the customer. There are some individuals, according to constitutions, there are some individuals who cannot enter into a contract. For instance, minor okay minor is an individual below the age of majority okay below the age of majority so you need to know that a minor cannot enter into contract now if a minor cannot enter into a contract then he is not capable he's not able to form a contract with a bank don't loan funds to a minor now, if it's a company's directors, okay, now I'm talking of business. If it's company's directors, then you need to ask for articles of association. Remember, the other day, I talked about MEMAT. Memorandum and Article of Association. And also, the resolution letter from the Board of Directors. The resolution letter from the Board of Directors. Article of Association describes rules, positions, authorities vested over the directors or managers of that particular business. So don't just enter into a contract with an individual simply because they have introduced themselves that they are the managers or the CEO of the, that particular company. Ask for these documents to be sure that indeed they have been authorized or they are in capacity to enter into a contract with your bank on behalf of the company. Again, the board resolution letter can assist you in all this. Now, again, if you are faced with some CEOs or managers of the business, 
ask for their CV, okay? Ask for their CVs to see so far what are their strengths, okay? In terms of what? Strength in terms of knowledge, skills, and experience, okay? Knowledge, skills, and experience. But also, ask for financial statements because financial statements can give you can give you some vital information as regarding to the financial health financial health of that particular business so therefore there are some questions here that you may ask your customer these questions will assist you to tell if this particular customer is able or not able to carry out uh, or to fulfill the lending contract. Question one, that the customer has the necessary experience and qualification to run the project he is asking the banking to finance. Okay, I give you an example. We have this customer goes by the name Mabena. Mr. Mabena is an experienced banker. He has been in he has been in bank industry for over 35 years. Okay? So call him a banking guru. Okay? And today Mr. Mabena is before you asking your bank to finance a certain project. And what is this project about? Running a school. Mr. Mabena wants to open a school. So, here is the question. For over, five, uh, for over 35 years, he has been dealing only with banking, finance, accounting, stuff like that. And today, he's he wants to be in charge of a school, a business that he has never undertaken. So, does he have necessary experience? Does he know the ups and downs of running a school? Again, does he have necessary qualification to run the school? If yes, fine, proceed. If no, then don't proceed. Advise otherwise. That's what you have to do. Don't just decline the, uh, the proposition yet. Because there are a lot of issues that we have to examine before we could come into conclusion. Alright? But if someone has been into education industry for quite some time and they have gained the necessary experience, then you proceed with another question. You know, the second question, how will the customer manage his financial affairs in the past? And here the customer needs to give you a proof to serve as evidence. Okay. So we want to establish fund management. Okay. We want to establish fund management. So if the business or the customer is a business, he has to provide you with financial statements okay now remember in the group of financial statements here i expect he need, he's gonna give you what the balance sheet income statement cash flow let's say in management account not bad please analyze these documents thoroughly also, if it's a business, it means all sales were routed through bank. Ask for a bank statement. Ask for a bank statement. Then analyze this bank statement in order for you to be sure that there is no mismanagement. If it's an individual for personal loan, I mean, that means they need to provide you with what? The salary slip. So please check the salary slip. 
See the deductions, okay? See all the deductions. In order to establish the amount that remains after what? The amount that remains after deduction. Because there is an issue of one third that needs to remain in case of what? In case of salary, I mean in case of a loan to salaried workers. Okay, there is an issue of one third. So you need to be sure that the salary or the amount of salary he's receiving can afford for him to take the loan, particularly the amount he's requesting. Another question is, is the management team, okay, is the management team of this particular business qualified and committed? Two issues here. Number one, are they qualified? And number two, are they committed? Or is just a bunch of individuals who are looking to get money in form of loan from a bank and then they, they overspend misappropriation of funds and after they run away? Fine. If they are committed to the business of the project, what about qualification? Do they have necessary qualification? We are first here with a certain business, okay? We are first here with a certain business that wants a loan, okay? For example, this business produces what? Let's say this business produces furnitures, okay? This business produces furnitures. Produces furnitures and sells all over. So I expect to have the CEO, I expect to have someone within the financial department, then sales department plus some other personnel. Okay, so let's see this financial department. Do we have a certified accountant? Yeah. An accountant with acceptable qualifications like the ACCA, CPA, etc. What about the sales personnel? What about the procurement team? So you have to be sure of qualifications of every single individual within this particular business. Is the same sales team qualified? Do they have marketing skills? What about these normal workers in the operation depart department? Can they really manufacture some good uh, and quality furnitures that would be marketable? Okay. If yes, proceed. If no, then don't decline the proposition yet. Ask for some more information. Okay. Does the management team have the necessary skills to succeed in the business? I think it's more like the same of what I've just explained. What is the experience of the team on the project the bank is about to finance? Okay, remember earlier we talk about edge of the business, okay? And also, now the business, for instance, the company might have, let's say, 40 years, okay? 40 years. But maybe the management team is just new. So the management team has only two years. Remember, at the end of the day, even though the business has been there for over 40 years, but the business cannot run itself. The managers are the one who are running the business. So if the managers are still new, not experienced, then you need to handle them with care, be cautious. Margin. As I mentioned earlier, margin is all about what? It's all about profit, remuneration. Okay? That is the return that we as a banker or the bank expect to gain just in case the entire loan is repaid in full. 
with its interest, with all the interests. Therefore, for you to establish the margin, you need to ensure that appropriate lending is done and all costs associated with the appraisal of the loan are included so that you can charge appropriately. I'm sure you guys, bankers, the charge is administration fee, a certain percentage of the amount. And this one is deducted upfront. Again, you charge interest. Okay, so it depends now uh, with the repayment schedule. Now, interest can be high for risky loan, and interest can be fair for just normal. Loans. I mean, non risky loan. Okay. For example, some banks can charge 3% interest rate on unsecured overdraft. Okay. But if the overdraft is secured, maybe the bank will never charge this interest. Rather, they will charge interest on the amount of the overdraft that has been consumed in that particular amount. Again, when it comes to loans to individuals who are working in the public, in the public, or uh, I mean the public servants or individuals who are working in the private sector, sometimes rates, the rates are different. Like you know, in the private sector, okay, at the private sector, there is no too much security, okay, no too much security. At any time, an individual can be fired or the company can be kicked and the business might collapse, just like what happened uh, to Acacia. Therefore, if a borrower comes from a private sector, some banks will prefer to charge higher interest rate. Okay, banks will charge higher interest rate than the interest rate that will be applied to individual borrower who is coming from the public. Or government institution. Purpose. Purpose is all about the usage of funds. Okay, you have come, you have come to a bank. You want to borrow some money. For what? Yeah. How are you going to use these funds? Where are you going to use these funds? For what reason? Okay. So purpose simply means the reason for granting this particular credit. Okay. Therefore, the purpose needs to be unambiguous. Okay. That's condition number one. Purpose needs to be unambiguous and number two, acceptable. Acceptable to whom? Acceptable to the bank. Here, I'm going to add one thing, okay? Actually, well, the bank knows better issues related to what? Regulations. Regulations, okay? Rules and laws of the country, right? It might happen that purpose of the loan purpose of the loan is acceptable to the banker or to the bank remember lending guidelines the credit policy the credit manual all right so it might happen the purpose is acceptable to the bank but contradicts country laws contradict country laws So the country is bigger than your bank. That means you need to decline this proposition. It's not acceptable. Because in case of dispute, you need to go to the magistrate. The laws that will be applied are the law of the country. Now, if the purpose of the loan contradicts laws of the country, no one will be there for you. You may be scammed. 
I'll give you a practical example of this. That's number one. Number two. Number two. The purpose can be acceptable by both bank and law of the country. But you are worried as to whether this particular individual will be able to repay back the loan if the funds are to be used for that particular purpose. Again, you need to protect the bank. So you decline the position. Let me give you this example. For example, I remember I read something some few years ago. Some few years ago, I read something about England. Okay. I read something about England, but I know for sure about uh, Australia, the Netherlands, okay, Netherlands and Germany. Okay. There is what we call prostitution business. Okay, there is this prostitution business. Okay, prostitution business is licensed in these countries. Actually, in many European countries, prostitution business is licensed. Okay, so a prostitute can approach the authority, and if he or she is qualified, then the authority will grant him or her a license. Okay, so prostitution is acceptable. Now, what I read about England is that uh, they were proposing to include uh, funds generated from prostitution, prostitution business into their balance of payment. So you can see they want to go very, very far. Okay. Now, if they are thinking like that, it means this prostitution business now is legal as long as you are dealing with a prostitute who is legally licensed. Now, this prostitution business is supposed to be to take place in a brothel, all right? It's supposed to take place in a brothel, not everywhere. You guys will agree with me that in, U in the UK or in the Europe, there are too many banks, commercial banks. And most likely, most likely, an individual might approach your bank asking for what for some funds for instance asking for ten thousand pounds to renovate a brother remember this business is licensed over there maybe it's acceptable maybe it does not contradict the laws of the country so if it's acceptable, fine. If it qualifies, maybe you may end up granting the loan. If it does not qualify, then you reject the ap application. But what about in your country or in our country? In our country, prostitution is illegal. Okay? In our country, in our country, prostitution is illegal therefore if we have one of these multinational banks okay if we have one of these multinational bank for example i don't want to names here let's assume bank xyz is a multinational bank bank xyz is a multinational bank from europe now it operates in our country okay so maybe in the lending guidelines, this business is acceptable. Therefore, you can see now, this is what I, this is what I mentioned earlier. Okay, that is, the project is acceptable by the bank. But same project is not acceptable by our laws. So, the country is bigger than your bank, automatically you need to decline this preposition. Should anything occur, you'll be in trouble. 
If it happen, the purpose contradict both your bank guide, uh, learning guidelines as well as the country rules. Don't don't even think twice. Decline the proposition. That's how it should work. Now let's see amount. Okay. Amount simply means the quantity of loan. Okay. Now in the question of amount, all right, we want the amount to be sufficient. We want the amount to be sufficient to cover the entire project. It should be less. It should be less, no more than or greater. Because if it is more than or if it is less than, we might enter into a whole new problem. So we need the amount to be sufficient to cover the purpose of the loan. And it is the duty of you as a banker establish that indeed the requested amount is sufficient otherwise otherwise your customer might be overstretched due to multiple borrowings and, and how the customer can be can overstretch if you give of if you offer lesser amount your customer will run and go to borrow some more funds somewhere else Therefore, he will have multiple debts. Now, repaying back multiple debts is a big, big problem. This customer ultimately will be overstretched, and if he's overstretched, at the end of the day, will fail to meet his contractual obligations as per the contract. Therefore, you should ensure that. You should ensure that the requested amount is sufficient you as a banker you suppose to prevent what we call greed loans okay you're supposed to prevent greed loans for example you have determined that this project requires only ten thousand usd but the customer is asking for 30,000 USD. It means the customer wants to divert this 20 for something else. And guess what? 20,000 will be diverted, but the entire loan, which is 30,000 USD, will have to be repaid by this project which has only received 10,000 USD following the diversion. So 10,000 cannot carry 30,000. Automatically, this customer will be default. This is what we call greedy loans. So you need to prevent greedy loans. You as a banker, Never suggest how much you are willing to lend to the customer. Let the customer apply, make an appraisal, do the math, and then come out with conclusion that this is the amount that you know, the bank can offer following your capacity to repay back this particular loan. Okay. I mentioned that you have a responsibility to prevent greedy loans as well as understated loan. Like, if you think, if you think that uh, the customer's project, okay, if you think that the customer's project requires twenty thousand USD 
to be completed and the customer for some reasons is asking for only 12,000 here there is a deficit of 8 that means this customer is gonna go and take another loan somewhere else so he will or she will overstretch and due to having multiple loans to repay again is more likely to default so you need to prevent this yeah the payment I'm I'm yes please i have a question please. yes please go ahead and to your bank and then you find me and you take it and then you find me you find that within the time what should be five days it will accept the one that that government will need you to leave the customer with but he or she can acquire three loans from your bank but you need to know that if you give this customer two million from your bank, here you she can access that means and the other microfinances and that means the other three million. Then what you do to us? This customer, you can't give him or her the exact amount or the exact figure from what he or she needs. All right. Now, from what I've understood from your question, you have a loan request from a salaried customer and the request is for 5 million. However, upon examining the salary slip, you come into conclusion that the repayment, okay, the, rep the repayment for this 5 million will exhaust the one third or will touch the one third, which is contradicts what? It contradicts government laws. So the question is what to do. Then you went ahead to say, if you were to give this customer, let's say, two million, okay, then most likely the customer might approach, let's say, a microfinance institution and borrow another three million. Now, it is true that you are required to prevent understated loan. So, in this case, the best practice will be to decline the preposition. However, I know bankers, okay, bankers have targets, okay, and from these targets, once the targets are achieved, are achieved there are some bonuses and a promotion this is what we call tempting the devil should you decline this preposition for good and fail to reach the target if you don't reach the target no bonus no promotion maybe you can end up being demoted or should you increase your portfolio at least by granting this two million? Now again, as per the principle, the best practice will be to decline because you already know. Remember, the customer has already said, for example, the customer has specifically mentioned that I need this amount for tuition fees. Okay, purpose of the loan. This is purpose of the loan, okay? Purpose of the loan to pay tuition fees. And there, there is an invoice, okay? There is an invoice which states that the tuition fee is 5,000 or 50,000. There is an invoice right there. So if you grant, okay, you have gone through the invoice, you have applied this loan, you have all the evidences that yes, indeed the invoice is legitimate. This particular individual has a university admission. Okay. 
and he is required to make this payment. Now, if you give him something lesser, for example, if you grant 20,000, okay, you need to be sure that indeed this individual will go to borrow what? 30,000. Unless he proves to you that he has another means to finance this deficit. Now, if there's no another means to finance this deficit, you need to assume that he's going to go ahead trying to borrow here and there in order to raise the entire 50,000. Now, once he has managed to raise the entire 50,000 from different sources, what happened? This is what will happen here. You have this individual, but this individual has a lot of obligations like you have bank A, bank B, you have microfinance C and money lender D and most likely he has sold some assets he will be overstretched most likely most likely he will default but the devil has been tempted. That is, there are some targets that a, once a banker achieves them, okay, he will receive what? Promotion and bonuses for having a very good portfolio. If the portfolio is bad, it might end up being demoted. Are you ready to be demoted? Are you ready to lose the bonus and promotion? And the business has competition. Competition is stiff. Now, I'm not authorizing. Remember, I say lending is an art. And I'm not saying you should do this. But yes, maybe you may end up granting the two million, as you've just said. But ensure that this two million, this loan, is highly secured secured by an asset for example if it's a house okay secured by an asset that has value which is greater than this particular loan at least that way you will be doing something. If you grant this amount and again it's not secured and if possible here you can as well secure okay this is secondary security now okay or additional security guarantee guarantee from a bank another bank or a reputable institutional individual Is what you should do otherwise you end up in trouble all right repayment and the repayment all we care is timely repayment because timely repayment can save the bank from entering into liquidity issues or liquidity crisis mm -hmm. Again, under the repayment, you need to consider source of repayment. All right? You need to consider source of repayment. Our friend has just given us an example. She says, you have an individual who wants a loan of 10,000, uh, of 50,000, let's say. Okay? By using the salary. So, salary is the source of repayment, all right? Now, he needs first to give you the salary. Now, upon receiving the salary, you start going through some information. Basic salary, let's assume it is 30,000. That is basic. Again, there are some deductions. 
Okay, there are some compulsory deduction like the tax, okay, WCF, PSSF, etc. Okay, so after taking all the deductions, what is the net take home? Okay, after taking out all the deductions, what is the net take home? Let's assume the net take home is 23. Okay, 23,000 is the net take home. Now, you need to cast your side one third. Okay, because one third is never to be touched. So, what is the one third? What is the one third of 23? Once you get this one third, again, deduct from the 23. You remain with around 17 or 18, let's say. Okay. So the question is, if you are to grant a loan of 50,000, for how many days? I mean, for how many years? Let's assume for three years. At what interest? 15% per annum. Repayment monthly. So the question is, is this amount sufficient enough to meet the repayment? All you have to do is to go to the formula that I told you about, if you guys remember, okay, I told you there is a simple formula that you need to use in order to compute what? To compute repayment. Loan equals to repayment 1 minus 1 plus R minus N, the whole thing divided by R, okay? Now, since the repayment here will be monthly, then you multiply with period, divide with period, divide with period. Remember, the amount that we have computed, the amount that you have computed to be used for the loan is 18,000. So, plug in the numbers. Take this, 50,000, this is the loan this individual is asking. Compute the repayment, okay? 1 minus 1 plus R. R is what? 15%. Therefore, it's going to be 0 0.15. Divided by M, M is going to be 12. Remember, it is monthly repayment, okay? N, N is 3 years. Multiply by 12. It's going to give you how much? How many? 36. Okay. Then here, again, you divide by 0 0.15 by what? By 12. So compute this at your own tempo time and come into conclusion on whether the repayment, okay, I mean, on whether this amount, 18,000, will it be greater or equal to? Or it's going to be less or equal to the repayment. If it is greater, I mean, if it's less than the repayment, it means the requested amount is too much for this individual to support using only his salary, so he should decline. But if this amount is greater than the repayment, then fine. What I mean is, for example, if the repayment that you get from this computation here, if the repayment is less than 12,000, 12,000 is less than 18,000. Therefore, accept. But if the repayment is 21,000, Okay, this is greater than the 18,000. 
so you need to decline the proposition. Same goes to a business, okay? Same goes to a business. That's the reason we want a business to prepare what? Cash flow projection, okay? Why do we want the business to prepare the cash flow projection? Because at the end of the day, we're going to take the revenues or the sales, okay? Then we deduct, okay, all expenses. Okay? Deduct all expenses so that we can see what will be the net profit. Now, if the net profit is, let's say, 30,000, okay? You have deducted all the expenses. Now, from here, see if this amount is sufficient enough to meet the new loan expenses. If it can meet the loan repayment, fine. You accept the proposition. If it doesn't, then you decline the proposition. It is that simple. Once you know what to do, it's easy to make an appraisal. If you don't know what to do, it might be a bit complicated. Okay. So the repayment ability should be demonstrated not through projected future accounting profit, but projected cash generation or cash flow. Why? Because it's the one that will show you or uh, will give you hints on how much you should, you should expect to be expenses and the net profit. Okay. Again, there is the question of repayment structure. Okay. Now, the repayment structure can be bullet or amortizing. All right. Now, amortizing, all right, amortizing, for example, if I take a loan that will last for three years, okay, will be repaid on a monthly basis, all right? So it means at the end of the month, I pay. At the end of another month, I pay until all 36 months. This is called amortization. Amortizing. Okay. Bullet. It means if you take a loan, that will mature in three years. So, year one, you pay nothing. Year two, you pay nothing. Year three, you come to pay the entire loan, that is the principal plus its what? Interest. But this is very risky. This is very, very risky. That's the reason many banks prefer the amortization. Okay, like you can pay on quarterly basis, you can pay on semi-annual basis, you can pay, pay on annual basis, you can pay on monthly basis. But waiting until the maturity of the loan is when you come to repay, this is extremely dangerous. You know, in every single repayment, let me tell you this, gentlemen, ladies, in every single repayment, okay, in every single repayment of the loan, okay, in every single repayment of the loan, there is a fraction of interest paid and the fraction is the principal amount of the loan recovered in every single repayment. So depending with the interest rate, you can tell how much from that amount. Let's assume the amount in question is 20,000, okay? So from this 20,000, you can clearly determine if you know the interest charge and the method of computing this interest. You can clearly determine how much is interest 
and how much is principal that has been recovered. Therefore, if this loan, if this loan is repaid on monthly, okay, and it will last after 36 months, and this customer comes to default uh, after meeting, let's say, 28 repayments, okay, it means by the time the customer is defaulting, you might have recovered a huge amount of the principal. But if you have to wait for bullet, bullet repayment, that is at the end of year three, the customer comes to pay the entire principal plus its interest. If for some reason the, his business collapsed somewhere in between, in, in between, you are doomed. Right. We have talked about all these issues like you need to compute the amount of regular repayments of capital prices interest, monthly payments in case of personal loan, check if customer has sufficient cash income in the future to service the loan or an overdraft facility, etc. We've discussed all these issues. Now, uh, another important issue here is that you need to obtain evidences of the customer's proposed source of finance. So if the customer says he is an employee somewhere, okay, you need to obtain evidence from his employers. Can it be a confirmation, an employment letter, an employment letter, confirmation letter, etc. Obtain evidence from his employees. Okay. He says he received salary. Ask him to give you the salary slip. From the salary slip or from financial statements, deduct expenses in order to reach out to what? To the net income. Again, these informations need to be produced to you, banker, by the customer himself. Once you get this information, go out for verification. Okay? Go out for verification. And if there is any question, okay, Call the customer for a face-to-face -face interview and ask for clarification. Ask clarification. I again I insist one thing. Please be ethical. Be ethical. If you do my practices, one day it's gonna haunt you. Now, the last part of company is insurance. Okay. Insurance simply means a safety net that the bank can rely if the loan is not repaid. In case of default, we need to have a follow-up plan. We need to have a means that we will use. Okay, we will use to recover our funds, and that is the essence of the loan security. So insurance simply means the loan security that a customer will pledge to the bank, okay? The customer will pledge to the bank to save as collateral. That is to say, in case the customer default, okay? In case of any default, the bank can realize its fund following the sale of this collateral. That is the meaning, okay? That is the meaning. So it is supposed to save other 
safety net. So <clears throat> anything can happen in the business. There's ups and downs. There are some seasons, etc., etc. Therefore, we need to have a means to recover. Now, there is one thing I always say. We do not grant the loans based on quality or the value of the security. Please listen to me. Don't grant the loan based on the quality or the value of the security. Grant the loan based on the quality of the previous six factors. There are seven here. So these six, if the customer qualifies, then grant the proposition. Security should be an addition. But if the customer has massively failed under these six, then no matter the value of the security, don't grant the proposition. Why? Because security has some issues when it comes to the recovery and realization of your funds. Banks do not accept any security or just security. Okay, the guidelines of your bank has specified some securities that are acceptable by your bank. However, every bank has their own guidelines, but at least the securities need to meet the following. The security needs to be easy to value, easy to charge, and easy to realize. Okay? You know, for example, if a plot has a certificate of opens, it will be easy to determine its value rather than a plot which is at the squatter. Shares, okay, shares fluctuates in their value. They are highly volatile. Shares are highly volatile. Today, share price of company XYZ might be USD 10. Tomorrow, might be, the price might be either USD 10 USD 12 or USD 8. That's the reason it's highly uncertain to accept shares as quarter. Why? Because price can change or just like that. The share of Lehman Brothers on that Monday declined from I think it was USD 80 or 40 I don't remember correctly from USD 80 or 40 all the way to almost cents USD this was a swift decline in just a single day so if you had used these shares as collateral then your bank is doomed you collapse the mode at which this security arrives to your bank is what we call charge. So the mode of charge. Uh, afterwards, we have a topic specifically designed to discuss different security that are acceptable by banks. Now, in this topic, we are as well going to discuss the various modes of charging security. So I don't want to waste much time over here. But this is the mode at which the security have reached to the bank. Was it a pledge? Was it a mortgage? Was it a bank lien? 
for the security hypothecated, etc., etc. We're going to discuss this. Then it comes to the question of realization. Can you easily sell this security in case of anything? Okay. First of all, can the bank acquire can the bank acquire this security easily? Okay. In case of default. For example, we have what? We have legal mortgage. Okay. Legal mortgage is very good and this is the kind of mortgage that is preferred by banks. Okay. With a legal mortgage, the banker can simply acquire the security and proceed with the recovery process without having to go back to the court again. And even if the bank will have to appear to the court, let's say the customer has just uh, applied for an injection or something, still with the legal mortgage, the bank has almost a 90% chance of winning this case. Uh, there is lien, okay, there is general lien and there is specific lien, okay. Specific lien is somewhat dangerous because here you, you will realize your funds from only the charged security, the specific item that was pledged to serve as security. So if for some reasons it has declined in its value, that's it. You're in trouble as a banker. But if you execute a general lien, this one gives you a wider range of assets that you can acquire from this individual who has just defaulted. So banks prefer more of general lien than the specific. Yeah. Marketability of the security is another factor to consider. The security marketable. Okay. So you need to consider that issues as well. Now with the security that mark the edge of the company. However, also there is five C's, okay? Five C's, the first C goes for character of a corporation, okay? We discuss about character in uh, and the company, so it's almost the same, okay? How is the company set up? Who is the owner of the company? What is the reputation of the company and its management? Does the management have a good relationship with its bankers and stakeholders? Okay, you ascertain all these issues, and the second C is for capacity. Lenders should consider not just the capacity to service the loan, but also capacity to borrow. So remember, uh, in Kampar, we discuss issues such as the age and authority to enter into contract on behalf of the company if the borrower is a business or a certain company. If an individual, then is the individual of the age of majority, yes or no? Collateral security, we have already discussed. Okay. Conditions. You need to check internal and external issues that are likely to affect the project. Because you, if you are financing a certain project, okay, and again, I need to insist on this, guys. The primary security for any loan, okay, is the project that you are financing. That is the primary security. That is to say, okay, that is to say, funds needs to come from, funds needs to come from this project. What funds? Funds to repay back the loan. So, loan repayment needs to come from the project you are financing and not from the security so pledged. So primary security of any loan is the project that you are financing. Therefore, you need to ascertain 
in internal and external factors that may affect this particular project. Okay. And again, I should tell you one thing maybe before we move further, excuse me. I should tell you this here under security. Okay. I forget to mention this. You know, realizing the security, you will face a lot of issues. That is the reason I insist that you need to grant the preposition based on these six factors. To realize the security, there is an issue, there are some legal issues. Okay. Again, it is costly. Cost in terms of what? Time and money. Again, here, there is a reputation risk. Okay. There is a reputation risk. That is the reason nowadays some of the loan, okay, we want the borrower to pay for life insurance or to pay a premium. I mean a premium. A premium for insurance of that loans, the borrowed funds. Why? So that just in case there are some good reasons for default, okay? The bank will be reimbursed by an insurance company. The reason behind is to try as much as possible to avoid reputation risk, time wasting, and some legal proceedings. There are some other individuals are just happy to go to take the bank to the court as many times as they can. As they can. And remember, there are different, different levels of the court. So let's say you start with the primary court, he appealed to the higher court, yeah, the district court. Then from the district, district court, the bank wins, he appealed to magistrate court. Okay. Again, if the bank wins, he appealed to higher level court, to the high court. And finally, to the court of appeal. So this is time wasting. Okay, you don't want to go through this. Why? Because we need timely repayment. Why? Because we want to avoid liquidity crisis to a bank. Why liquidity crisis? Because the fund that we offer as loans are actually depositors' funds. So you should be careful with this. Again, speaking of reputation, assume the security for a certain loan was a house. The borrower has just suffered an accident and passed away or serious sick. So he is defaulted. Unfortunately, this loan had no insurance. So selling the house, it means you need to kick out to the street this family. And there are some kids over there, children. This is not acceptable. It will damage seriously the reputation of the, uh, of the bank. But the reason we're trying to find another means, okay? And actually, even before we come to the point of realizing our fund from selling the security. What we usually do before that phase is we perform loan restructuring. Okay. Call the customer for a face-to-face -face interview, apprise the loan, reapplies, reapprise the loan, and come out with new repayment schedule. Okay, come out with a new repayment schedule. We shall discuss this 
in the coming sessions. All this is to try to be as friendly as possible to our clients. Okay. So the fourth C stands for capital. Okay. That means now you need to ask for financial statement of the company and do analysis. All right. What about PASA uh, P4 personal element? Here you assess the integrity, culture, and ethics of the firm or individual. Okay. Amount required, same as what we discussed under company and C. All right. And this amount should be sufficient for the required purpose. Repayment should not be solely on cash flows. All right. Same analysis as what we did with the company. Security experience. How does opportunity fit into the funding and target and target market segment of the lender? Like you guys have your own objective, a set of enumeration, margin. Okay. How much are you gonna earn if you are to grant this proposition? So as this for the rest, I don't want to uh, talk much about this. Maybe you can research them by yourself, but uh, please remember most commonly that we use are the five C's and the company. I need you guys to thoroughly understand each element of the of these mnemonics, the five C's and the company. Okay, uh, very, very important. That marked the end of this evening session. If you guys have any kind of questions, now it is the time. However, maybe before you move to the questions, I would like to share with you a loan application form. In this loan application form, I want you to determine if it fits under the described mnemonics or elements that we've just learned. Okay. The company or five C's. Okay. I want to go with you through different sections of the loan application form in order to see if all these elements have been captured within that application form. All right, gentlemen, that is. Uh, credit to one of our friends who has just shared this form with us. Okay, actually, the, this is loan application form from one of reputable commercial banks in our country. Unfortunately, the form is in Swahili, but I'll try my best to interpret what is here. What I want you guys to establish is on whether this loan form captures, okay, whether it captures the elements of credit appraisal, that is either company or the five C's. Company or the five C's. Okay, now <clears throat> here you suppose you supposed to stick your picture. Okay, you're supposed to stick your picture for identification purpose. Okay, and it would be much better if all facial features, facial features, will be seen clearly visible. So there is my picture. All right, now here. It's uh, personal information, okay? Section one, personal information. Now, what about, what information do the bank want to capture? Personal information, okay? All right, so uh, sex, gender, gender, male. 
all right? If there is like an academic title, professor, then you take here. So it can be a male professor or a doctor, then you take right here, all right? First name. So you need to write correctly your name in full, all your names. For example, Ferdinand John. Right? Now, before the maiden name, maiden name usually applies to women. So here I'll say not applicable. Nationality, Tanzania. Right? ID number, okay? Or passport number. So you need to fill in your passport number. Telephone number, yes, 0620123456. If you have a telephone, then you can fill it here. Let's say 022, 022, 262624. An email, therefore, if you have an email address, then you need to fill it here. Okay. Freddy dot John at XYZ dot com. Birth date. Okay. Birth date. Third November X Y Z Z. Marital status. Are you married? Are you single? Divorced? Widowed? Okay. So you see here, bank wants to capture your marital status. Let's assume you are married. Therefore, married. How many dependents do you have? Very important. We talk about dependents. How many dependents do you have? Three kids. All right. Now, section two, banking information. Banking information. Do you have a bank account with National Microfinance Bank? Yes. Branch Mwenge. Account number. 0221100020 how many years you see how many years since you ha have you been operating this account eight years you see here the bank wants to capture what banking relationship with the customer okay here the bank intend to capture the banking relationship with the customer do you have any kind of loan with our bank? No. If the answer is yes, okay, if the answer is yes, then over here you need to state the remaining balance. So let's assume, yes, I do have a loan with this particular bank. Remaining balance, 4,500,000. When did you take this loan? Let's assume three years ago. So that was 1st of February 2019. When will the loan mature? After three years, you can do the math. Okay. So information about other banks, all right? Now, Banks, for instance, CRDB, branch Azikiwe, type of account, business account or saving account, let's say it's a saving account. Okay. Did you take a loan? Yes. How much? Let's say 10 million. 
repayment 1.5 remaining balance 1.5 which means this loan is going to end this month if there is another loan with another bank you need to fill in here the bank will use this information to cross check with CRB credit reference bureau therefore if you lie like for instance you say you do not have any other loans with any other bank and the banker check with CRB to find out that you do have a loan it means you are not honesty dishonesty so most likely you want to fraud the bank residence information okay residence information so here you need to provide the residence masaki all right highly Selas road excuse me all right for how long have you been there now there is what we call a score sheet loan credit score sheet this question is very important for how long have you been in this address okay if a customer has been there for less than two years okay for less than two years treat with ultimate caution he is not known there is higher degree of risk just in case he disappear you won't be able to trace him but if the customer has been in a certain address for let's say 10 years 10 years is too much that means neighbors knows a lot of information about this customer you can easily track him so under the score sheet if the customer has been staying in a certain address for too many years we hire we give him higher marks but if the customer has been there for some few years or days then you need to handle with care okay now the type of type of the residence okay let's say brick house okay brick house then then uh, is it your house rented etc etc okay we discuss these issues okay is it do you own the house is it do you rent are you living with your parents is it a mortgage or is it a house given to you by uh, your employer all right if it's a mortgage then you need to step down there here are some information about your current work okay here information about your work then here information about the loan all right therefore amount how much do you want 10 million okay so remember under company amount okay 10 million for how long five years okay then here purpose of the loan purpose of the loan all right so here if the purpose of the loan you need to state for instance tuition fees medical fees house renovation purchasing purchase of a plot or anything else you need to state all right here is all about security okay section 6 security guarantors all right guarantor or guarantee contract is under security so here they require two guarantors guarantor number one and here information of the second guarantor okay and last declaration okay so under the declaration you need to sign all right you need to sign 
All right, here are your names and then signature after signature and date. Today it is at the 1st of January 2023. Have seen exactly how uh, it works and you must have seen the way this loan form has been created to capture different informations that are, following, uh, are falling under the lending assessment models of either Campari or the five cents.